Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and welcome back to the Judge Mathis channel. Time for another Q&A video brought to you by the patrons. If you want to support me directly, there's actually a Patreon you can go check out. It comes with all kinds of rewards, like a monthly podcast between me and my editor, as well as a Q&A tier where you can ask me questions, either via email or on the Patreon or on the Patreon Discord. This was coming from Furioso over on the Patreon Discord. Furioso asks, if there is any rhyme or reason behind the games I'm going to review, or how do I choose the games I'm going to talk about on the channel? And that's a question that should be pretty easy, but because I'm me, uh, there's actually a little bit of an explanation, a little bit of a weird, uh, seemingly chaotic rhyme or reason as to the reason I cover the games that I cover. Maybe surprisingly or unsurprisingly to some of you, I actually do have a list of games on my PC that I kind of want to cover. It's quick and dirty and it gets edited quite often, um, but I actually have it sectioned off into four distinct categories, more or less, for my organization. The first is PC games that are considered classics that I actually did play growing up. Uh, those would be your typical like Diablo, Diablo 2, Starcraft 2 if you want to talk Blizzard stuff, uh, Command and Conquer, any of the Bullfrog games really, the Sims games, at least the original ones, you know, the stuff that people really loved growing up. Uh, and then I actually got to play and experience myself. And those are the ones where I get to look back and kind of compare what I felt about them then and look at it with eyes over a decade or two decades later and see if any of those feelings really carry over or hold any weight. Star Wars Republic Commando is kind of a good example of that. It's a game that most people, especially in the Star Wars fandom, really love. And I remember liking a lot growing up. And then I played it again and I could had conflicting feelings as to whether it was as good as I remember it uh, or if it was just really unique and did something really interesting during its time. And able to compare the two of them uh, with a more modern eye. Games that I didn't play growing up as far as PC classics, that's the kind of thing I'm looking at where uh, we're looking at games like Planescape Torment, um, some of the later Baldur's Gate, like Baldur's Gate 2, I didn't actually get to play all that. I, got, I messed around with it, but I didn't get to actually play it fully through uh, all when I was growing up. The Dungeon Keeper series, both of them on the channel, uh, are great examples of, of PC classics that I didn't get to cover, uh, or didn't get to enjoy, rather, when I was a kid. And being able to play those with an understanding of how much people love them without the nostalgia glasses that come along with playing classics like that that I may have loved when I was a kid uh, allows me to have a kind of a unique experience in that regard as well. And I try when making these videos to really push forward like, hey, I grew up with this or I didn't grow up with this because it's going to inform my opinion on the game. Where if I didn't play Republic Commando and I played it today, I genuinely don't know if it would be considered nearly as good as it was back then. I still kind of attach a lot of nostalgia to, to Republic Commando, for instance, um, but would it be really a good game to somebody who had never played it before? Uh, that game specifically, I still think people, you know, Star Wars fans especially, would enjoy it for what it is, but it's not, you know, it's not as amazing as I remember the game and uh, being back when I played it as like a 14 year old. I'm so itchy. And those lists are huge. There's just an infinite number of games on both sides that I want to talk about, that I'm really eager to talk about, and I could really focus on those two lists alone for the entirety of this channel's lifespan, however long that ends up being. But then there are the other things that I either was made aware of tangentially through a friend or through a video at some point, uh, games that I either remembered hearing a little bit about as a kid or never heard of at all, but has a huge fan base behind it, especially now. Now. Those are like the cult PC games. In fact, Sanitarium is one of those games where I was only recently kind of made aware of its existence in the past three or four years uh, and just find that it has a pretty big fan base nowadays and, and doing research on the game before I even played it, seeing that there was all kinds of forums theorizing as to what the game really meant and how trippy the game was then and still really is today. Uh, I really want to make time for those particular types of games, things that might be able to provide me with an experience that you would not be able to get today. I would argue, actually, that Sanitarium is a great example of, of a type of game that just doesn't exist that much today. The closest to a Sanitarium style point and click would be something I think along the lines of Oxenfree, um, kind of supernatural, surreal, mental horror and, and confusion with you know, some light puzzle solving, but mostly it's about the story that's being told. Um, you just don't see a lot of those anymore. Uh, and back in the 90s, during the, the, the point and click adventure, those kinds of games were a lot more common. Even, even then, uh, they were technically kind of rare, but 
they're way more common back then than they are nowadays, even with the indie scene really bustling uh, like it is. The final list out of all of them is kind of the smallest one. It's it's the one I have labeled as just miscellaneous. It's games that I've either saw that were hand, you know given to me for my collection or I picked up randomly for my collection and said, that looks weird. Why was this game never popular, especially with what it's promising? A really, really good example of that recently for me, and I know there are people out there who are like, you don't know what this game, you never played this game? No, I've never heard of it until I had it. Darkstone. This is a PC game that I know nothing about, but it looks like it's like, a Diablo-esque style game with a more focus on a story than anything. Um, it's by DSi Software, published by Gathering Developers. I, I had never heard of, of what this game is, uh, but I know there are people out there who know what it is because I've talked about this on stream one time when I was just hanging out and talking to some of the viewers and just talking about my collection. Um, but this is a great example of a game that's on my miscellaneous list of, of just what is this and why didn't it do well. Uh, action role-playing games back then were really only Diablo and Nox, and obviously Diablo was the biggest one, um, but there was more. There were other ones that tried to tap into that genre and, and make some money out of it, and then we never saw a sequel, or maybe we saw one sequel and didn't get anything else out of it. Uh, and the sequel was, was released pretty quickly after the first one came out. Crondor is another one that I had heard of that I actually have in my collection, or should say another one that I hadn't heard of until I got it in my collection. And it's, it's a, a weird looking RPG that those who know what it is have incredibly fond memories of, but the game did not explode in popularity as some of the other stuff. And we didn't really see it beyond its initial game and maybe a sequel and an expansion. And then it kind of just disappeared off the face of the earth. As for which game I choose to review and when, uh, that that's even more nebulous because there's no real rhyme or reason there. I just really kind of think about how what I'm feeling like playing an RPG, an action game, a strategy game, um, and then I kind of look at my list and go, what is calling to me at the moment? The only time that there's ever really structure is themed months, like I did the uh, obviously Star Wars month, which is happening right now as we speak. Uh, the first one should be live hopefully next week. Um, but then I did the but then I did the Legacy of Kane marathon, which lasted a few months where I did all five games there. So it really just depends. Otherwise, it's just what am I feeling like playing and what do, I, what do I think I have a lot to say about? There comes points too where I dip into a game and I only play it for like 30 minutes to an hour and I'm like, this is boring and I have no drive to finish it. And since, you know, Judge Matt, this is a channel that only puts like one or two videos a month, uh, me kind of forcing myself to play a game that I am just not enjoying or don't at least find interesting uh, I, I try to avoid for the most part. Killer7 being the one that I'm gonna be covering after Star Wars month is over is a game that mechanically uh, is pretty poor so far. <laughs> I, I put a, like four or five hours into it um, and mechanically it's simple, frustrating sometimes uh, with its weird, weird navigation system. Uh, but overall it is, it is not a fun game to play but the experience and the story it's telling and what it's trying to do narratively and visually, especially for a game from 2005, is enough to want me to continue pushing on and see what this game has to offer. So basically it's a roundabout way of saying I have no criteria, I just look at my list and see what I want to play and then I play it and then I make a video about it. And for those of you who are curious about the behind the scenes process about how I choose what I play and and uh, if there's even a rhyme or reason to it, I hope that sated your curiosity. Uh, there's just so many great games to talk about from the, that era of the, the late 80s, all through the 90s, and even the, the early 2000s that I genuinely don't think I'll ever have a method as to choosing what game I'm going to cover. And then I, I have so many games to cover that I'll never cover them all in my lifetime, especially, you know, since Judge Math is still uh, very much just kind of a passion project and hasn't really taken off in any substantial, you know, any way where it's self-sustaining, let's put it that way. Um, but I love it. It, it, it allows me to indulge in my nostalgic bone. I am very much a child from the 90s. I very much miss that era of gaming where technology was constantly jumping ahead, leaps and bounds. And the things that were happening on PC that we didn't see on console until Xbox and, and the Xbox 360 as far as player choice and RPGs and stuff is also you know, eye-opening for people who have never really done this or, or, or dove into PC games before to, to learn that something like Baldur's Gate was doing player choice and multiple endings well before we saw that kind of thing on, on the console. Uh, to some people is, is huge news and sometimes that's the reason I even want to cover a game in the first place because I can point to something and say, hey, it was happening before consoles and isn't that interesting? Because 
Gaming is interesting, if not tons of fun. Anyway, that'll be it for this particular Q&A. If you want to throw a, a question my way and have it answered in a video format, uh, the, the Q&A tier is the way to do it. You can do it if you sign up for that tier by throwing me a question on Discord in the Q&A room for those people and above, or through the email or through the Patreon itself. If you want to consider supporting the channel directly, you can head over to the Patreon and check it out. Uh, me and Dean just put out Mad, the latest episode of the Mad Pod uh, for Patreon members of $2 tier and above, where we talk about uh, November and what we were we've been doing all November, the next three Judge Mathis games, as well as uh, talking Hitman 2, Artifact, and a few other stuff. We kind of talk retro and we talk new releases. And since we're in the midst of the new release season, that's kind of been our focus. Uh, but that is a once a month thing for all of the patrons of the $2 tier and up. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll be back next week with some Star Wars. See you then.